Level 100, Pinnacle of Power for a Pokemon. Very few Pokemon ever reach this level. This is a series of videos in which I push Pokemon's levels to the absolute limit by raising them to 100 in unconventional ways and environments. Because, more or less, I'm crazy. This is the Level 100 Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. So, I've spent the better half of this past month in this Eterna Forest here, at this creepy old mansion, hunting for this dude, Rotomus, the shiny Rotom. And I'm finally done with that, so I can finally make my way out of the woods and out of that creepy old mansion into a different mansion. One that's maybe not as creepy and definitely not as old but emphasis on the maybe not as creepy, where I'm going to take on a level 100 gauntlet by stealing from the rich. How we're going to accomplish this is thanks to a daily event within the backlot mansion on Route 212, exclusive to Platinum version. The five made knockout exact turn attack challenge. And it's exactly as it sounds. To win the challenge, you have to defeat these five maid trainers within an exact number of turns, ranging from five to nine turns. You can't go over or under the given number of turns, or you get nothing. You lose! Good day, sir! But if you do win, you win the fabulous opportunity to fight either Rich Boy Liam or Lady Celeste, which honestly doesn't really sound like a great prize at first, until you realize that their Blissey is holding a rare candy. Now this Blissey will take any opportunity it can to try and use Fling to get rid of its rare candy and waste it, because it was born into riches and probably doesn't realize the rarity of this candy. It probably just sees it as candy, not even rare candy. So for this gauntlet, we're going to be stealing this rare candy away before that Fling can ever happen. And we're going to repeat this challenge and steal it away 99 times to be more precise, since you can repeat this challenge every single day. Getting to this point to battle this Blissey isn't exactly cut and dry though. The maids that we have to fight beforehand mean mischief and will do whatever they can to stop you from battling this Blissey, since they're actually secretly Power Rangers. All five of these maids have Clefairy, and these Clefairy are pure evil. All of them know Metronome, Meteor Mash, and Endure, and each one has its own signature move. Belinda has Minimize which will make it very hard to hit. Sophie has Sing, which will try to put your Pokemon to sleep. Emily has Encore, which will force your Pokemon to use the same move multiple turns in a row. Elena likes to use Swagger, which will confuse your Pokemon. And Claire takes to the skies with Bounce, making you waste a turn unless you have something that can hit an airborne opponent. And all five of these Clefairy also have the cute charm ability, making it so a male Pokemon with moves that make direct contact is a major liability, because they'll fall in love. All signature moves aside though, the ultimate obstacle is the move Endure. Since even if you outspeed the Clefairy with a very powerful Pokemon, Endure takes priority, and will guarantee that the Clefairy lives a hit at the end of the turn. When you have to complete the challenge in five turns, this is an automatic reset unless you have a way around it. So let's talk strategies to beat Endure in one turn. My first thought was to use a multi-hit move like Arm Thrust, but that actually doesn't work. It endures every single hit of it. Next I thought maybe using a move that inflicts poison or burns. And while this works great, it's a little bit too inconsistent since there's no damaging move that has a 100% chance of burning or poisoning the target in Gen 4. And my third idea was using a Pokemon with the Sand Streamer Snow Warning ability which summons a sandstorm or hailstorm that can take out a Pokemon using Endure 100% of the time. But the catch is, the only three lines of Pokemon that get these abilities in Gen 4, Hippowdon, Tyranitar, and Abomasnow, all cannot learn Thief for the Blissey battle immediately after. Then the fourth idea was to use a Pokemon with the moves Fire Spin, Sand Tomb, or Whirlpool, because the lingering damage from those moves would knock out the Pokemon using Endure. But, the major catch to that is that these moves all only have a 70% accuracy, meaning they'll be missing most of the time. I could alleviate this a little bit by giving the Pokémon the Zoom Lens item, which increases accuracy when your Pokémon moves last, which it always will in the situation of an Endure, but it won't even bring these moves accuracy up to 100%. 
and we'll still be dealing with the super inconsistent 70% rate on the turns where the Clefairy decides not to use Endure. And ultimately, I reached the conclusion that there is no optimal way to both beat all five Clefairy and then steal the candy from the Blissey 100% consistently every time. But my conclusion could be wrong. Let me know if you have any ideas. So I'm going to press forward with this gauntlet in a suboptimal way, but with the most perfect and beautiful Pokémon that I own. We're going to power through this, thanks to the power of Susan. My shiny Machamp that you might remember me randomly running into earlier this year. She happens to be a great candidate for taking on this challenge, because she has the No Guard ability, meaning that she bypasses all accuracy checks. She's also plenty strong, can take down all these Clefairy in one hit, unless they use Endure. I still don't really have anything around Endure with her. She can learn Thief to take away the rare candies. And she also has the move Foresight, for whenever we need to make the battle last an exact number of turns. Admittedly, I could have taught her Toxic to get around any Endures on the last turn, but I decided against it. Now I guess I'll be 100% transparent with my thought process as to why I didn't use Toxic here. And it's because I just didn't really feel like going out and looking for the Toxic TM and then using it up since TMs are single use in this generation. I'm sorry, Susan. So there will be a luck component here, hoping that the opponent doesn't pick the move Endure too many times over the course of these five battles. But that's fine by me, because I'm used to resetting the game over and over again until something favorable happens. So let's talk about the lucky recipient of these 99 rare candies and actually get into the gauntlet now. So since this Maid challenge is exclusive to Platinum, I thought it would be fun to use a subject for the gauntlet that's exclusive to not Platinum. In Heart Home City, in Diamond and Pearl only, you can get a Happini Egg, and some fairly blatant Heart Gold Soul Silver foreshadowing. So I obtained it and traded it over to my Platinum. So instead of taking candy from a baby, we'll be taking candy for a baby. And I'm gonna keep the egg in my party to see if I can complete this whole challenge before it even hatches. So with all our preparations complete, I made my way over to the Backlot Mansion to really begin on August 28th, 2021. Day one. Here we are. I recommend saving beforehand um, because you might not finish the battle in the number of turns required. So uh, let's see if we can do this. Eight turns is nice. That gives us plenty of time to do this. Um, let's get through this. So in case you might still be a little bit confused about how this challenge works from my explanation earlier, here's my whole first attempt at it sped up. My basic strategy going into it is for the first four battles only using Karate Chop and not trying to waste any additional turns with Foresight, even if I have to make the entire challenge take nine turns. In this case, I was assigned eight turns. And as you'll see from these first four battles, we actually use up seven of those eight turns because three of the Clefairy decided to use Endure. I wish I understood the Gen 4 AI a little bit better to calculate the odds of each of these Clefairy using Endure every turn, but I couldn't find any answers out there when I searched. Whatever those chances are, it happened a lot. Alright, we gotta one turn this one in order to win. All comes down to this. If all goes well and you don't have to reset, it should take about five minutes to get through all five maid battles. It is still all luck of the draw though, because an endure could happen at any moment, even during the fifth battle. So completing the challenge could actually take a while sometimes. But once we win, all we have to do is steal the rare candy. Look at those seal capsules he's got. Not nearly as cool as our Susan there. Not nearly as cool. Yoink it. Alright, so now it says please visit again tomorrow. We won't be able to collect more rare candies until tomorrow when a day passes. Or at least that's what they wanted you to do. We're gonna do the midnight trick. Alright, so after finishing that battle, um, First, want to make sure we take the candy from the Machamp because it would be pointless for us to, uh, to go at the challenge again if we weren't holding, if we were still holding that rare candy. Gonna want to go outside and save out here. Now we gotta make it tomorrow. So we need to go to our DS settings and not change the calendar date because if we were to change the actual calendar date, this wouldn't work. But what we do is we go down to clock here. You set the time to uh, 23.59 or 11.59 without changing the date. 
And quickly, before another minute passes, we're gonna turn off the DS now, turn it back on, boot up the game, and wait for the hour to roll over to midnight once again. All right, so we wait for the clock to strike midnight, then we go back inside. All right, it's midnight. So, we can go back into the mansion. Let's see if it's tomorrow. There we go, it's tomorrow now. So, we can save again, take it on again. Meanwhile, in real life, it's still August 28th. So while I'm here attempting to steal some rare candies, I have a rare beverage that I did not steal. I actually purchased this one online. It's a cake flavored uh, Mountain Dew cake smash. So I ordered this a little while ago. I had to get it shipped to my parents' place because it wouldn't go to my regular zip code for some reason. Um, and when I came back, I noticed I had a new roommate. I have to crack this open and see what this is like. I can't imagine what a birthday cake flavored Mountain Dew would be like. It looks kind of like clear in color. It smells like dew. That's not bad at all. This tastes like uh, one of those like 7-Up or Sprite cakes if you ever had one of those from the grocery store. I enjoy this while these Clefairies just keep using Endure. I want to point out that the word do-over is spelled with a D-O here when they really could have spelled a D-E-W here and it would have made total sense. So what on earth were they thinking when they, they created this? Well, now that I've reviewed a new Mountain Dew flavor in the middle of this video, we got our first real challenge on our hands. Five. This one's gonna be tough. This might take a few tries. Our first five turner. When it's a five turner, we have to defeat every Clefairy in one turn with no room for a Clefairy using Endure whatsoever. We have to first turn them all. If a Clefairy used Endure, we soft reset. I'm honestly not sure if on a five turner, if I should just uh, go through with it and just keep trying. It's taken seven tries so far for this one. Or if I should just go to the next day. Cause that could happen. On to attempt number eight, let's go. It ultimately took eight attempts at the challenge and over 30 minutes just to get the third rare candy of this gauntlet. Yoink. I was a little bit concerned that it was gonna be too slow. But then my next time taking on the challenge, it only took me three minutes to get to Blissey and get the fourth rare candy. At this point, I knew I was on a pretty wild ride with the RNG, and I honestly didn't even want to get off. Anytime I was Delta 5 Turner, instead of skipping ahead another day and getting a more favorable number of turns, I took it head on. Yo, chill out dogs, I'm just trying to play Pokemon. Back from my walk now, and I'm watching a good talk. I then played for about 30 more minutes and got up to a grand total of 9 rare candies for day 1. Between challenges, I was still a little bit inefficient with the way I was doing things, because I didn't realize that you didn't have to walk all the way back to Heart Home if you needed to heal, and I didn't yet realize you could just wait in another room of the mansion instead of exiting the mansion every single time I wanted to change days. These little optimizations would come later. And I didn't even play that much day one anyway, because I was mostly visiting my family, including cardboard cutout Santa Claus. I started out day two having a lot of trouble with the five turner, spending over 30 minutes of my walk just watching these Clefairy endure, and watching myself fail over and over again. I had to resort to some drastic measures to try and break the curse, and move on in the challenge. That's one down. All right, if the second Clefairy uses Endure, I will dab on camera. By putting the ultimate sacrifice on the line, my own dignity, I managed to whip these Clefairy into shape to stop using Endure so I could move on. All right, I'm, I'm safe from dabbing on camera. I don't have to dab on camera anymore. Uh, next up is battle number three. If this Clefairy uses Endure, I will say a swear word. I don't think I've ever sworn in a video before. Would it get me demonetized? Or would I just get demonetized by using a random song in the video like I normally do anyway? 
Whatever the case, Clefairy didn't use Endure, so I don't have to. I was really about to say Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, but thankfully I didn't have to say that. All right, battle number four. I will do a stupid dance on camera if this one uses Endure. And thankfully, I didn't have to do a stupid dance either. It'd be really, really embarrassing if I posted a video of me dancing. You don't want to see that. I, I definitely don't think I'm ever going to post a video of me dancing. All right, fifth and final battle. If this Clefairy uses Endure, I will literally soft reset the game and attempt this again. Pretty high stakes here. It actually didn't. I may have put everything on the line, but that's how all good heists go. When you're in the business of theft, you really learn a thing or two after a couple days. Like how, in the room right above where the challenge takes place, you can heal your Pokémon and save there, to reduce the amount of walking you have to do before you steal the next rare candy. And you also learn pretty quickly how a bouncing Clefairy means absolutely nothing to a Machamp with no guard. I'm not sure how it does it. Maybe it sends out a shockwave with its karate chop, or it really extends its arm up there, but it's somehow able to hit this Clefairy right out of the air, and it's spectacular to watch every single time. In fact, the Karate Chop is such a spectacle, sometimes you kind of lose your eyes on the prize. Instead of stealing the rare candy, you Karate Chop the Blissey instead, and waste a few minutes of your life having to do the challenge again. I'm just talking in hypotheticals, though. That would never happen to a skilled thief like me, racking up a ton of candy in one day. But the life of a master thief isn't always this productive. Sometimes you just get one rare candy in a single day. But, a lot like the squabbit taking the bird seed from the rookadee feeder, you have to savor every morsel you steal. But you don't actually have to hang upside down like an acrobat when you do. In fact, acrobatics work best when you're not holding an item. To truly live life as a thief on the run, you have to do thief things. Like legally stream anime and steal other people's time by streaming on Twitch. And let me tell you this, when Breloom Baby 808 asked the question, do, do I, I play Pokemon, Pokemon Go? Go? I knew exactly how to steal the show. Pokemon Go. That Pokemon Go question had kicked off the experience of a lifetime, listening to Misha's beautiful Pokemon Go song on loop until I won a five turner. And it's pretty clear to me that the Clefairy here are all Misha fans. And <laughs> used Endure! We get to listen to this at least like four more times! Let's go! We got to the fifth and final battle so many times during this, only to be betrayed by the final Clefairy. At chat's request, I also sped up and slowed down the song just to make it sound like a different song because we had been listening to it for so long. I slowly spiraled more and more into insanity as this had become the longest five-turner yet. Is this what it sounds like when you die? I think I started out streaming with more viewers than I usually get, and the longer that this went on, the more people I watched leave to grab their phones and perhaps play Pokemon Go. But after a grueling 16 attempts, the most that I had spent so far on a 5-turner, Misha's not coming back. I finally won. We're safe. Bringing me to 41 total candies at the end of the day. On the weekend of September 4th, I went on a journey to a strange place. That was the intersection of video games and agriculture. <laughs> Alright, I got evidence of the supernatural right here. This is a sign that says ghost controls this gate. Oh my gosh, it's opening up right now. That was the most ghost-like thing I've ever seen. If you watch a lot of my Gauntlet videos, it may seem like I've been here quite a few times to hang out with my friend Mr. Let's Play It. But this was literally only the third time I've ever been to this place. I've just happened to be working on gauntlets every time I've gone here. And every time, I managed to find new ways and places to train my Pokémon. Like getting my first ever rare candy in the vicinity of a goat being milked. Also, here's a chicken that kind of looks like an Absol. To be honest though, I didn't get much gauntleting done during this IRL because we were mostly shiny hunting. I didn't personally find anything, but Mr. Let's Play it found a Golbat. Oh, shiny Golbat! What? Oh, man! We also exchanged novelty beverages. I feel like it can only be good. It's got multiple footballs on it. 
no uh, nutrition facts on it also, which is interesting and controversial lawsuit potential. All right. Oh. Give him a good side pour. It's very brown. Cheers. Cheers. That's exactly what I was hoping it would taste like. It's pretty good. It's not as chocolatey as I thought it would be. Specific. Oh, Tootsie Roll. <clears throat> it That's tastes, it. It tastes like That's a Tootsie it. Roll. It's Tootsie Roll. I really thought I had made some good progress on the gauntlet when I was out on the farm. But when I got home, I discovered I had gotten less than 10 rare candies the entire weekend. So it was time for me to do some serious thieving. And I made some great progress on day six, but I made a mistake that I hadn't made before over the course of this. I went into a battle with the Blissey with my Machamp still holding the previous rare candy. So Thief did nothing, and I had the candy flung in my face. You'd think Machamp would maybe just, you know, level up from that happening, but I guess that's not how rare candies work. It's the morning of September 7th. I've got Steve's stream on. I've got my DS all set up. I've got my first pumpkin spice of the year because I'm basic. And I have a work meeting in two minutes. But uh, I'm gonna do the gauntlet while working. So in perhaps the most realistic theft so far of me just, I guess, sort of committing work time theft, but not really because I was fully paying attention to the meeting, I attended my daily status meeting while also working on the gauntlet. And I stole a single rare candy, Scandalous. Then later that night, I had a movie night with some friends, watching the movie The Boy and the Beast for the first time, which was really, really good, by the way. And during the movie, I hit a very important milestone in the number of rare candies I had. Nice. And then I put in two more days of work, just stealing every now and then whenever I could find the time, whenever life wasn't stealing time from me. At this point, when I was given a five-turn challenge, I would actually move the date forward to re-roll the number of turns that I'd have to do it in. And it was far more efficient than what I was dealing with beforehand. That's 89 candies down. 10 to go. 10 to go. Let's take on the rest on stream tonight. The egg's still nowhere close to hatching. All right, we're gonna steal this candy. It's gonna be our 91st. So... We're so close to being able to one-hit this thing, but we're just not. Unfortunately, I hit the threshold now where they use full restore, so we have to go through the slowest HP bar of all time, twice. Like, okay, fourth gen HP bars are really slow already, but we have to watch it fill up all the way and go all the way down within a single turn. I swear this, this whole process here takes like at least 20 seconds just to wait for this bar to go down. <laughs> yeah, it's Sisyphus trying to push the rock up the hill, but it's, it's Blissey's HP bar. On the second to last rare candy of the gauntlet, I decided to time this, just to see how long it would take. All right, the second that I hit this move button, I'm gonna start the counter, or the timer. That was like 21 seconds. All right, science complete. The end of this gauntlet is in sight right now. All right, now for dramatic effect, I'm gonna go outside for the final one because there's something cool that happens outside when it hits midnight. For the final section of this heist, for the final portion of this journey, I need to go incognito. I need to sneak into the mansion in disguise. So, I will put on my gamer glasses. And I will put on a Domino's pizza visor. I'm just a simple pizza delivery boy who will be delivering my Machamp to this to this mansion and I'm gonna steal this final rare candy. The, the mission is, is it's, it's set in stone. I just need my soundtrack for it now. It's heist in time. All right, y'all gotta watch very carefully. I've been observing this mansion for a while, trying to figure out how to sneak in, and I noticed something pretty interesting here. These windows, they turn off. Or the lights within the windows, not the windows themselves. Windows can't turn off. They turn off at midnight. So when the clock, when the clock strikes midnight, and we're under the shroud of darkness in the mansion, I'm going to sneak right in. I'll, I'll just hide in behind the statue, waiting. Actually, no, I can't wait behind the statue. I'm too hyper. I'm just gonna run around outside and see if my egg hatches. 
Alright. Coast is clear. No one's gonna see me. It looks like all the lights are still on in here, though. I don't know how that works. Maybe they just have fake windows. But, uh... It's time. Just a humble pizza guy. Getting ready to deliver a butt whooping to these Clefairies. And some theft. That, that's what we're delivering right now. How many turns? Six. Not too difficult, but still could present a challenge. Could still present a few turns. Let's see if this works. So in my pizza disguise, I took on the final challenge. I don't think a single person in the mansion questioned me. Or my presence. You're kind of just allowed to go into the mansion anyway, so you don't really need a disguise. But here's my final attempt. Because I don't think I've shown the entirety of this challenge too many times in the video so far. Alright, now I need to take your payment, so uh, please hand over your debit card or cash. Another form of payment that we do accept is rare candy. Took a minute, but thank you. Thank you for the rare candy payment. Um, have a wonderful day. Okay, enough of that song. We did it. We received the rare candy from Susan. Uh, I've got 38 hours of playtime. I don't remember when I started. I will in editing though, because I have the footage of when I started this gauntlet to see exactly how many hours of gameplay this took. And now, check it out. 99 rare candies. Got just enough. All right, time. get ready for the best Pokemon music of all time. Listen to this. We listen to this a lot. This song on stream. So, our final destination for this gauntlet takes us to the church in Heart Home City, where I asked for forgiveness for stealing so many times. I ran around in circles here until the Hapini hatched from the egg. But wait! It turns out it wasn't actually a church. It was just a foreign building. Because that's what the game calls this place, for whatever reason. Then, with my new Hapini, which I named Robin Hood because Hapini are very, very skilled at archery, I fed it 99 rare candies to make it reach level 100 while listening to this incredible music. I don't blame you if your foot's tapping right now while you're listening to it, too. Level 100, the pinnacle of power for a Hapini named Robin Hood that I stole all these rare candies for, and I kind of feel a little bit bad about it, but I don't because it was from really rich people who weren't going to do anything with it. This is... Me leaving the foreign building. And there we have it. That was a fun little gauntlet. Also, I could have found a shiny when I was showing this thing off in battle, but all the shiny luck got used up on someone rolling a random number in the chat and getting banned instead. But now we have this definitely super strong Hippini that's really, really powerful at level 100 because it's got incredible attack stats. Such a powerful level 100 Pokemon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.